Finland is the fastest rally of them all. The 1,000 lakes is more of a sprint than a marathon, like a Grand Prix on gravel. The challenge for drivers is handling the undulating bumps or yumps that rise out of the road. They litter every stage of the rally, so it's no surprise that only a handful of foreigners have ever come first. You don't have to be finished to win here, but it helps. Hello there and welcome back to some more WRC Zero Continuum Let's Play. This is episode 9 and in today's episode, well, you don't have to be finished to win here, but you do have to finish. Get it? It's the Finland Rally. Let's go to Iki, whatever this one's called. Okay, stage 1 of Finland. Let's uh, try to keep it on the track. Of course, I need to mention because this is Finland. If I wanted to be a, if I wanted to be in the air, I would have been a pilot or something of that sort. I actually had that quite memorized the entire loading screen and then lost it. So uh, yes, I am well aware of that quote before someone mentions it. Although I did pretty accurate to Finland. I don't really like the Finland rally. I'll be honest. No, by I don't like the Finland Mount Rally, I mean I like the Finland Rally a lot, as you know, I like watching it, but I absolutely hate participating in this in any game I've ever been in. Because the AI are a lot quicker than me, because I am a pussy when it comes to uh, the jumps and so on. Oh, what a surprise, everyone who's Finnish <laughs> is... Uh, doing well in the points here. I do not expect Subaru to uh, do well here in terms of our uh, any standings. I'm much more expecting it to be a uh, Mackinac Gromholm sort of rally this one. So uh, don't expect too much in the way of excitement in terms of the, uh, the points field this time around. It's actually kind of nice to drive on relatively smooth gravel for a change though. It looks quite uh, pleasant. But uh, yeah, no, usually in games this rally is uh, very much in the middle of a forest. With sort of giant trees on either side as you try to maintain your cool doing 120 miles an hour over jumps and not lifting. And hoping sort of God corrects the car for you. Not, I mean, it, it's fun, it's just not my idea of fun, if that makes sense. Again, I'm, I'm a little bit too much of a bitch to enjoy the finish rally. I shall be honest, although in this game, uh, this stage, I is uh, pretty good. Again, I haven't actually seen this part of the game before because uh, I didn't get through it this far. I got through it far enough to know that you have snorkels in the safari rally, but uh, beyond that I am pretty blind, although again, uh, in this game, on normal difficulty, that seems to be pretty much fine. because. Uh, Normal difficulty is very easy, and uh, even if it wasn't, guess what? You have a map in this game, which makes it a lot easier. So I don't really have to listen to the co-driver all that much, although I am still, of course, keeping my eye out for the uh, the symbols and listening to him slightly. Although in this rally, I'm more listening to when he says jump, so I know to cry beforehand. Yeah, Gronholm, Makinu and Rovenpara. We are certainly alright here. At least we don't have to worry about signs so much in this rally, I wouldn't imagine, because Fords don't usually do well here. As we sort of by the Ford taking a big old tumble in the, uh, in the starting screens as well. I'm imagining the, uh, the pre-tune's got the gear ratio set to long for this. Why wouldn't they be? It's a really quick rally, this one. Okay, cool. We are still pretty firmly doing quite well, although apparently that last split was pretty bad. That song's really irritating because it's loud. Alrighty. Let us go for the usual autosave, which takes forever. Again, don't really care about autosaving ghosts, but apparently it's something this game does. Uh, Solberg, Mackinnon, Gronholm, Roman Para, Didier. Okay, Carlos is in six, never mind. Burns isn't too far. So, uh, Persia is definitely gaining some points here by looks of it. No sign of Loix though. I think Loix is uh, really going to start dropping out of the championship by the looks of it. He had a good one. He had a couple of good rallies actually. 
I was rooting until him until I found out he wasn't a Hyundai driver. Turns out he's actually a Mitsubishi driver. But of course, I, I have to mention that because uh, as I'm driving the Subaru, of course uh, I must hate all Mitsubishis because you can be only one way or the other. All joking aside, I like both cars before you get on me. I, I like the Subaru in Pretzels, I like the Evos, they're both cool cars. I prefer Subarus because they have better interior quality and they come in blue more often, but other than that I don't really, I mean I prefer the way Subarus look as well, but I, I, I just, if someone came up to me and gave me an Evo I would go, ew it's not an Impreza, I'd be like yes please give me keys, so <laughs> it, it doesn't really bother me all that much. To be honest with you, my least favourite least favorite car in the WRC at this point is probably the 206, but that's just because I don't really like the 206 as a car IRL. You know, it's one of those cars that makes me laugh, like the Fabia, where it's not at all like its road-going sort of um, version at all. So, I guess if I'm gonna refuse, if I'm gonna be refused to give him one car in there, the WRC 206, because you could actually have some fun with a Hyundai accent trying to kill it. But, uh, there's no fun in a 206. There's just pain and suffering while Americans go, "But it's got a cool face." Um, because they don't see them very often. Yeah, anyway, I can't really hate the Americans all that much for that because I like the Chrysler. Oh, sorry, the uh, Dodge Intrepid and the uh, Chrysler Concorde from the 90s because they look like fish, and I find that funny. I also kind of I I do like the Intrepid. You know the uh, the 90s Grand Turismo Intrepid in purple. Give me that thing. I, I like that a lot. I don't know why, because it's an awful car, and I know it's an awful car, but I really like it. So That's basically the Americans with the 206. I'd imagine most Americans do know that the 206 is actually a pretty awful car. And before you say it, I have actually driven a 206 in real life, so unlike 99% of the cars, which I say are awful and I've never driven them, like the 350Z, um, I, I have actually driven a 206. We've got actually driven two 206s, and I can confirm they are awful, awful cars. Uh, and by awful cars, I mean they just—they—they—they're they, they're just nothing. They—they they just they, they do nothing, other than be slightly uncomfortable in terms of the seating position because the steering wheel is too far in the air, like driving a dump truck. But uh, yeah, I know. I mean, other than that, every other car in the WRC is pretty cool, especially in WRC spec because. Uh, you know, the Hyundai Accent and Citroen Zara in full WRC spec are a bit funny to look at. Because th th those those cars are really out of their comfort zone in terms of uh, being what they are. And that's pretty much every modern WRC car though. They're both they're based on pretty, you know, boring humdrum hatchbacks but are kind of cool cars in full WRC trim. Eh, four drivers up from six, or from eighth to six apparently. Peugeot is still locking out that one pretty well. Peugeot definitely on to score some points. I don't know if anyone wants to place any bets on whether Citroen's actually going to gain any points by the uh, the end of this game. Of course, I can't participate in that bet because uh, I already know. I'm fairly certain by the time this game goes up, or at least I'm hoping we'll have the entirety of the. Uh, normal career played through on my end so uh, I will yeah be completely done with the game so it can all just go out nice and neatly, neatly while I work on the professional career and before you say it, I already have an idea for the car I'm going to use for professional so uh, don't you worry and by have an idea I mean I know exactly what I'm going to use because I have every single car for every single WRC game planned out already yeah I know uh, it was pretty sad but, uh, you know me, I don't like using a car one too many times, or car repetitiveness, or, you know, whatever. I'm very, uh, you know, I know what I want to use, I know what, but, uh, you know, I don't want to show any biases to any manufacturer. I want to get through all the cars and show them off, and if I can't show off all the cars, then I'll do some on the second channel as well, so. 
Yeah, I, I'm fairly certain as far as, uh, at least on this main channel, you will see each car from each manufacturer that participated and each of their different models, like full models, so facelift stuff not so much. Uh, but in terms of like all the, I think it was nine cars total, because uh, no one really switched cars other than Skoda and Peugeot, who switched from the free uh, from the uh, Octavia to the Fabia and the 206 to the 307 respectively. And of course, uh, between WRC3 and WRC4, Hyundai pulled out because they decided enough was enough in terms of getting completely shagged. And then they showed up a few years later with the i20 and no one cared because modern Hyundai is quite boring. It's like Skoda when they entered WRC in sort of the 90s here, it was sort of a bit of a laugh because Skoda was kind of a funny manufacturer but now we're sort of more used to Skoda's being good cars and Hyundai's were used to them being quite boring cars that people buy a lot so we don't really care all that much. It's a bit like if there was a Dacia WRC car, you'd laugh at it for the first few uh, times you saw it and, well, let's say if they entered a WRC car in like 2013, you would have laughed about it, but now you probably would have been like, mm, you wouldn't really care because you see Dacias everywhere and they're not that funny a brand anymore. It's like seeing the Proton rally car in the games. Proton was never successful, so Proton's always funny to laugh about their WRC efforts. Get how this works. The more pathetic your manufacturer is, the more likeable your uh, rally car will usually be. There's a reason why uh, certain people fanboy over the Peugeot 307 WRC as much as that was an awful car. I'm guessing the 307 uh, CC was also awful in real life, but uh, the WRC one uh, definitely has a quirk, you'll see that later on. We love that car. A lot. Apart from the fact he killed someone. That was a bit of an ooh! Richard Burns got six, he knocks off Ford Driver. Ooh, come on Burns, he gets six, my boy. We'll lock Ford out completely. Even though I'm fairly certain Mitsubishi's beaten Ford in the uh, manufacturers, but I ignore that. Why do headphones always get tangled? I know they include like that little thing where you're supposed to untangle them with, but no one ever uses those. No one ever uses them for anything, most of the time people just sort of... Put, you ever pull headphones apart? Like, you know, there's that little divider in the, uh, in the middle which is supposed to keep them sort of connected, but you pull the ones behind it and then they will end up like knotting and stuff, but uh, you, you sit there and you wonder why you did that, but in the moment you do it, you just think it's funny and fun because it's something to do because you're really bored. Can you notice I'm trying not to use the uh, the same uh, transition out of the loading screens because I noticed when I was editing and I noticed this a lot with my voices when I insist on doing something at least once so for example if I say um, you know, or something like that. I, my brain will uh, just say it over and over again, like three times in a row in rapid succession. I'm sure I'm not the only person to pick up on that. I think I've said that about this quite a few times. So I'm noticing when I'm editing these, I'm like, uh, alrighty, or okay, onto this stage, or something like that. So uh, I'm trying to just sort of boom random conversation topics into the year instead of saying alrighty or okay here we go sort of thing again it, it, anyone who sort of makes videos themselves or live streams or does anything where they have to listen to their own voice can probably empathize with me I don't think anyone ever enjoys editing for their own voice except maybe the lead singer of Nickelback but that's because he's a cunt anyways I actually like Nickelback's music a bit. Don't don't run away with that. I, I you know I'm not listening to how you remind me on repeat or anything like that. But uh, yeah, Animals is a pretty cool song. They did some Nickelback do some good songs. They're all right. They're not like abysmally awful musicians who've just never made good music and have like no right to be 
as cocky as they are. They have a little bit of right. They are like one of the best selling rock bands ever. It's just, uh, you know, a complete cunt. Into the uh, the tree wall at the side of the uh, track here. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm, again, I, I can't listen to Photograph and Rockstar gets on my tits a bit. But uh, Animals is good. I think they did like other good songs. <laughs> I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure they have. Uh, I don't hate Nickelback all that much. The Spider-Man song's pretty awful as well, actually. Although that wasn't Nickelback, that was a bunch of random musicians who came together to form music that sounds just like Nickelback. So, as is, as is. I also don't mind Creed. I know that probably gets under people's skin a lot as well. My Sacrifice is a good song and I will insist that till the day I die. Most people watching this video probably have no idea what I'm on about because they don't care about, you know, mid-2000s modern rock music, which was actually quite bad. That's okay. You, I, we don't shame anyone on their music taste on here, although if you do like the dubs and the whoops, I do question you slightly. That being said, I have quite an eclectic music taste. I actually like some dub wood music. I like, um... I like some of the stuff I was in in AFS 2015, actually. I can't remember what the name of the song is. A bunch of YouTubers used it because it was copyright free. It has a pretty good bass drop in the middle of it. I can't remember the name of it. It starts off somber. It, that, that explains all, like, modern dub wub songs, so I'm not going to go any further into that one, but, uh... Yeah, no. That's all awesome. I Wasn't it called, like, Encore or something? Anyways, we got beaten by Gronholm and Rovenpower, but it doesn't really matter because I got a 30 second lead on all of them. Carlos Sainz went into 6 apparently. Knocked Burns off. Bit sad about that. Tried looking for that song in my Three, two, random YouTube one, MP3 go. collection and I can't find it. Although, I, I, again, you know, when I say I've got a slightly eclectic music taste, that sort of brings it into question because there's a. Uh, Lots of weird stuff in my uh, random YouTube MP3 folder. I've got everything from Happy Mondays to Dogs Trismo to uh, Years and Years and other stuff in there, Phone App. There's just weird stuff in there. But uh, as should be immediately obvious by anyone who's been around this channel for any length of time, it's of course mostly metal music oh, on my side. I don't try to play it too much, although, you know, any excuse I have to uh, educate people on the good stuff, I always have to take it. I am one of those people, I'm sorry to say. Of course, people might notice the uh, the intro-outro song is actually a Slipknot song, which I say to people and they always get really confused, but uh, yeah, no, it's actually from their 1996 demo, Eat, Eat Feed, Mate, Repeat. Although, actually, that's a slight lie because that version has more bass added to it, I think, and so I'm cleaned up the, uh, just basically cleaned up the audio and added more bass to it. So, but the song is called Confessions. It's a really good song, actually. I do recommend Confessions as a song. You actually, of course, you get to hear uh, the... I don't remember what bitch you get to hear. I think it's the... Baseline leading up to the guitar solo on the um, intro and the outro is the chorus that would eventually go into the guitar solo. So, uh, yeah, no, I do recommend Confessions. I actually recommend Mate Feed uh, Kill Repeat because uh, that is actually. It's it's, even if you don't like Slipknot, it, it's worth a look into because it's very strange. Um, sort of a lot heavier. And you expect, oh, that's it. New Zealand all is wrong word. Beautiful. Alright, let's stop talking about music and let's get on to some actual like, WRCing, I guess. So, after all of that, uh, we got our full 10 points. We were 29 seconds up on Marcus Gronholm, Tony Mackinnon, Harry Rovenpare, Didier, and Carlos was in six. Richard Burns just missing out. Uh, Alistair McRae was uh, quite high up, so was, excuse me, so was Ericsson, so uh, yeah, not a good day to be a Subaru driver, definitely not a good day to be Jesus. 
All right, we have won the, I, it's not Nest Cafe, but I want to say it is. Uh, so, as far as the driver standing goes, we are 60-something <laughs> points ahead of Carlos Sainz. Uh, 60, oh sorry, we are 57 points ahead of Carlos Sainz. We are 60 points ahead of Tommy Mackinnon. Uh, Richard Burns in fourth, Ford Driver is fifth. Didier goes into the sixth, actually knocks out Freddie Lloyd. Uh, him and Gronholm are tied, okay. And as far as manufacturers, Peugeot shoots right up, but uh, of course we're mainly focused on Subaru, who get 12 points. Ford would get four points and remain in second, Mitsubishi in third. Peugeot go from sixth to fourth. Uh, with six points, then out to 11 points total, then Skoda and Hyundai, and unfortunately Citroen still has no points. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching this edition of WRC, do hope you've enjoyed. Next time we'll be taking a look at New Zealand apparently, so uh, we shall see what challenges face us down under, slightly. Join us for that, until then, farewell.